Welcome to week one Bible Studies for Life in the fall of 2021. That's right, Labor Day weekend, September is here. The weather is turning cooler, not so much in Texas, but maybe where you are it is. Uh, so we're excited about having uh, this time together. Great, great studies that we're going to get to go through for the next three months. Really excited about looking at starting in 1 John. And one of my favorite books, I mean, just uh, maybe I say that a lot, but it really is one of my, my favorite books to go through. And I think you're really going to enjoy this. So let's look at this passage. Uh, we're going we're gonna to pick a, a few pieces out of this that we really want to kind of put our emphasis on. It says, this is the message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light and there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in darkness, we are lying and are not practicing the truth. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, one of the things, the theme of, of this book is this idea of how we know that we're walking with him, how we know we're in relationship, and what that relationship looks like when we're walking with God, when we're in fellowship with Christ, when he is moving in our lives and we are we are closely related to him, what that looks like. And here we, we have this first thing where he's talking about, you know, what you do, how you live as opposed to what you say, right? The difference in what you say and what you do. And he says, you know, here's the message is that God's light and there's no darkness, okay? And this is true about God. There's no darkness in him. He is light. He is light. He does not emanate light. He is light. That light emanates from him because he is light in and of itself. And so if you say you have fellowship with him, but you walk in the darkness, you're a liar. You're not practicing the truth. Now, it's important that we understand some of the verb forms here. When he the, says here, when we walk in darkness, this is a continually walking, not a, not a, a uh, stepping out into dark a dark spot or or walking down a dark path for a moment, but to live in darkness, to walk in a darkness all the time. And this darkness is defined as God is light. There's no darkness. So darkness, when we walk in darkness, we're walking away from where God is, away from relationship with him when we are walking in a place where he is not. Because where he is, there is light. So if you're walking in darkness, well, there is, he's not there, right? So if you say you have fellowship, but you live in darkness, you're lying. You don't. So it, it's more than just what you say. You can't just claim relationship. You actually have to have relationship, right? And so he says, but if you walk in the light as he is in the light, then you have fellowship with one another as well as with him, right? And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. Here's proof of your salvation in a sense. It's not that you get saved by walking in light, but because you are saved, you walk in light. And when you when you walk in light, then you have fellowship with others who are also walking in the light. It, it is what you do, not what you say or what you claim. So here's the setup to it. And, and of course, one of the things that John's going to emphasize to us is that there is sin, right? And, and we we can't just live in sin. If you're living in sin, then, you, then you're then you showing that you don't have a relationship. There's evidence being brought forth here. Okay, so if we say, again, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Okay. Now, if we go back here, you could, some some might take this part and say, well, then if you're a Christian, then you live a perfect life. You never sin. So if you sin, there's evidence that you're not a Christian. But clearly, he's talking about how you walk, how you live, not the, the missteps that you take, okay, but how you live. Because here, he then says, if we say, look, if we, we say, John's including himself in that, we say this, so it's, if believers say, I don't have any sin, well, that's a lie. You're deceiving yourself. And, th and that's a great way to put it, isn't it? We're deceiving ourselves. We're tricking ourselves. We're not fooling anybody else. Everybody else knows. Everybody else knows what's going on in our life. They see it. We're just fooling ourselves, right? There's no truth in us. But if we confess our sins, so here the, the, the um, exhortation is not to... Um, that you 
that you have to live a sinless life. It is that you need to recognize when you fall, when you sin, and confess it. That is to say the same thing as to agree with God about what you've done. Yes, that was sin. Not to make excuses for it, to rationalize it. Well, it wasn't that bad. It's okay. Not that at all, but to recognize, yes, it was sin. I did it. I committed it. It was wrong. We confess our sin. Then God is faithful and he's just, righteous. He'll forgive us. This is 1 John 1, 9. If you memorize a verse in 1 John, if you only know one, you ought to know 1 John 1, 9. He will, he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that God cleanses our lives, right? But if we say we haven't sinned, again, this repeat, right? Well, we make God a liar because God says, I know your sin. God knows that all have sinned and fall short. We all sin. So so own up to it. Don't try to deny it. Don't try to pretend it doesn't exist. Don't try to rationalize it. Just say, yeah, it was a sin and confess it and go on with your life and your walk with God. But if you're going to walk in the middle of that sin, if you're going to live in that sin your whole life, you're going to walk in darkness, then what you're giving evidence of is not that... Um, that, well, I speak a good game and that's really all that matters. You're giving evidence that you don't actually know God at all. That you don't have a relationship with him at all. So it's interesting, isn't it, that, that it's almost like the, those who sin and admit it and know it and then confess it, those are the ones who have a relationship. Those who have sinned but won't admit it, they don't, right? My little children, he says, I am writing you these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. Listen, it, it, it's very clear. There is forgiveness, mercy, grace is offered to us in the person of Jesus Christ, right? He says, I'm not writing this to you so that you'll never sin, because I know that's not going to happen. If, if your expectation is, now that I'm a believer, I won't sin anymore, well, you're going to be, you're going to disappoint yourself, okay? Nobody else is going to be disappointed. They're all going to know, they know what the reality is, but you're going to disappoint yourself, and you're going to live with a guilt that may be hard to deal with. He, he's saying, I'm not writing this so that you may not sin, but if you do sin, and that can be if and when you do sin, we have an advocate. Jesus Christ is our advocate. He's on our side. Jesus is on your side in this. He goes before the Father and he says, my sacrifice, my life sacrifice paid for that penalty, paid the penalty for that sin. So that sin is forgiven because of the blood, right? He is the atoning sacrifice, atoning, that at one to atone, to make us at one that he sacrificed for us so that we can be at one with God, that we can be in relationship with him. This is the joy of forgiveness. This is the gracious generosity of God's grace and forgiveness to us is that we are, we are forgiven and that he makes us at one. He brings us into relationship with him in spite of our sin, not because we have rid ourselves of sin, but, but in spite of it, because of the sacrifice of Christ who paid for it, he paid for ours. And then this is key, not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. This sacrifice of Christ was not just for us, it's for everyone, that it goes out to everyone. And we need to, we need to internalize this for ourselves. Okay, if you go around trying to pretend that you're not going to sin, you're going you're gonna to be disappointed. Okay, because you're going to sin. We all do. What, what do we do at that point? Do we hide it? Do we deny it? Do we rationalize it? Do we um, blame other people for it? Or do we own it, accept it, accept that we did it, and fall under repentance? I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that. That's not who I want to live like. That's not the kind of person I want to be. That's not who God saved me to be. Confess it. It was sin. It was wrong. Lord, forgive me. Make me whole. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just. He will forgive your sin and cleanse you of all of your unrighteousness. If you say you don't have sin, you're just lying to yourself. You're deceiving yourself. God knows that you have sin, and he sent Christ, who is our advocate, to pay the penalty for that sin. So confess it and get right with him and walk with him, and not just us. But know that that message goes to everyone else who lives under the burden of sin. Because everybody has the sin. Everybody has that burden of sin. And what? how do we get rid of it? There's only one way, and that's through Christ. Hey, I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching. 
excited about the next three months, this quarter of Bible, of, uh, Bible Studies for Life. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, like, comment, let us know how this is working uh, for you. Um, share it with others. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel because we're going to have a great next three months. All right. We'll see you next week.